The five keys to getting the loving, long-term, and committed relationship that you desire. In this free training, you're going to discover how to attract the right man to share your life with and have a loving relationship fast without loneliness, trust issues, or wasting time attracting oh, the dreaded emotionally unavailable men. New secrets to create an amazing, happy family of your own the easy way without fear, unhealthy relationships, or endless dating. And lastly, quickly manifest a healthy, emotionally available, and long-term commitment without the past holding you back any longer. Now also, it's for you to feel safe to be open and vulnerable. Have fun. Travel the world with the ideal guy for you without feeling insecure or choosing the wrong man. And finally, attract a deep connection mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, without feeling unsupported, down, or even worse, ending up alone. And even better, at the end of the video, you will also get a juicy and surprising free gift as well. Hey, I'm Antje Boyd. I was born in Communist Eastern Germany before the world came down. And I was single my entire life before I finally hired my own love coach, discovered the magnetized your man method, and attracted my amazing, handsome, and supportive husband, Brody. And amazingly, together, we've now been helping thousands of successful women all over the world for over a decade to attract their man, to share their life with, and have a loving, long-term relationship as soon as possible without loneliness, frustration, or rejection. You may want to know, I studied personality psychology at UC Berkeley. I'm an LP and dream coaching certified, and I've spoken on hundreds of stages and radio shows all over the world, including Google, the Harvard University Faculty Club, and Good Morning San Diego. Now, I've also been featured on ABC Radio, America Trans TV, The Great Love Debate, and for over a decade, studied everything that I could get my hands on in the areas of love, psychology, and creating a happy, committed, committed relationship with your man the easy way, without fear, trust issues, or even worse, men pulling away. But look, it wasn't always like this for me. Now, I actually grew up in an emotionally absent household to a narcissistic mother. And what it essentially meant was I was saying like, like hugs and kisses were as common as Christmas and Thanksgiving falling on the same day. As a matter of fact, I remember when I was only 18 months old. And I was trying to crawl into my mom's bed. But instead of like lovingly lifting me up into her arms, she rolled over with the words, Stör mich nicht, which means don't bother me. Now, it's not a coincidence that did ha that has become my core belief, right? Don't be a burden, right? Don't bother anyone. And because of that, because this was so shattering, to me, so heartbreaking in that moment to feel that rejection from my mom that I made sure that I will never bother anyone again. And how did I do that? I developed a coping mechanism. And a coping mechanism was me being misindependent, being self-reliant, making sure I don't need anyone, and on top of that, be a high achiever. Now, what that translated into was I was gro going grocery shopping by the time I was eight years old by myself. I was taking myself to gym classes in the darkness, mind you, during the winter by myself. And I thought nothing of it. That was so wrong. Like, this should never happen. And even worse, when I started dating, when I hit the final the years of dating, I attracted men who were just as conflicted inside of themselves as I was inside of myself. Now, let me backtrack. What do I mean by that is that I felt conflicted inside of myself because there was a part inside of me that wanted to have the deep, connected, long-term relationship that still wanted to have the love and the affection from my mom. However, I realized that that's not going to be in my reality. So 
I put on this mask on that I don't need anyone. Confusing, right? So this is the same thing that I did. I sent those completely mixed signals to men. And then I was surprised that I attracted men into my life who made me all those promises, right? You're the always wanted, never expected miracle, you name it, made me all the promises in the world only to drop me like a hot potato from one minute to the other, leaving me feeling rejected, insecure. What just happened? Shocked, abandoned, not good enough. And th there must be something wrong with me because like, if what just happened, the world becomes unpredictable. Now, this was really important because the next step that followed was me actually understanding, wait a minute, I think I have a part to play here. Because if I attract the same kind of guy with a different face over and over again, hello, I'm the common denominator. Isn't it true? So I took that ownership and I said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to get myself out of Germany. And I got myself into UC Berkeley to study personality psychology and attachment style theory, because I really wanted to understand on an academic level, like the achiever that I was, like, why was I attracting dysfunctional relationships in the same way how I had the dysfunctional relationship with my mom, right? Like, how, how was this happening? And so I was studying all of that. And it was interesting, right? Because I learned a lot, right? I learned a lot intellectually, but not a lot shifted. So then I decided, okay, in addition to that, I threw myself into workshops, into seminars, right? Watch YouTube videos, you know, listen to podcasts, you name it. I've done it on dating, romantic relationships, understanding men, forgiving men. I mean, you name it, all the things you could ever imagine on this planet. And what ended up happening is that I became highly sought after by single women, right? Because they said, oh, I know. Antje went to workshops last weekend. I'm sure she has the answer to my dating problem, why my guy has just dropped off the earth or how to talk to him in the best way possible. So I get the result that I desire to have. And lo and behold, I actually had the answers. It's kind of funny. I started this support group and almost all women in that support group attracted their man. As a matter of fact, it wasn't uncommon for me to be invited to their wedding you know, to their engagement, um, be the maid of honor. And I almost, I felt a little bit like, <laughs> like this actress in uh, the 30 dresses, right? Which was always like, I was like the maid of honor, but I wasn't the bride. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. Like, what's wrong with this picture? You know, clearly I have something here on my hands, but yet there's a formula, there's a, there's a logic, there's a strategy that works, but like, where's my man? And that's when I decided, okay, wait a minute. You know, a fish doesn't know that it's wet. Meaning I can't look from the outside in. And so I decided to hire my own love coach who helped me to break from my own blind spots that I didn't even know that I had. So some of my blind spots were I was afraid to be vulnerable without the fear of looking weak, right? I didn't want to make the wrong decisions. You know, I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't want to get ridiculed or even worst case, I didn't want to get attacked or being taken advantage of. Also, I had a really hard time setting boundaries, particularly without guilt, right? So I, you know, I didn't want to rock the boat, right? I didn't want to be the complicated one, right? I didn't want to like cause friction. So I just didn't say anything. You know what I mean? I just agreed. I accommodated. I abandoned myself, but with the help of my love coach, I actually was able to set boundaries without guilt and ultimately learn to trust myself. And then of course, there's no coincidence that nine months later, I made my incredible husband Brody, who told me the first night we met that I'm the girl of his story. Okay, but not only that, because you know, as you know from my past, Men were making me a lot of promises, empty promises, but he actually followed up with actions. What that means is he called me, he texted me, he asked me out on dates for eight months, and then he proposed marriage to me. And a couple months later, 
we got married, right? So I know this is totally possible and doable for you. Even if you feel like you're giving all your power away right now, you have lost all self-respect and you almost feel like, is it even possible for me or do I have to settle? And before I settle, I rather end up alone. So check this out. Let's talk about the five keys to getting the loving long-term and supportive relationship that you want. Key number one is discovering what you really desire. And when I say really desire, I'm really talking about not what your mom desires for you, not what your coworker desires for you, not what your best friend desires for you, not what society desires for you, but what you desire, right? So what that takes is starting to focus on yourself. And that in and of itself is a skill, right? Because if you're so used to focusing on the other person and reading of what they desire of their lips, well, then it's going to be a little bit more challenging to identify, wait a minute, what are my real desires? So how you want to go about this is you actually want to go into like, okay, so I love this couple that I saw last week. I love how he held hands with her, but I love how he cherishes her. I love how he supports her. I love the adventures that they go on. I love, right? Like, so you can just, what I call shop for those qualities that you like in other couples or that you've seen how other men treat their woman, right? So I love how he's like so supportive, right? I love how he's like always has like a smile on his face. Also, you can totally go into your own dating uh, past and you can say, hey, you know what? Like, yes, it didn't work out with Steven. However, I love this quality of him having intellectually stimulating conversations with me, right? Hey, it didn't work out with Mark, right? But I love how he makes me, he's like so silly. Like he's hilarious. So you want to create this vision of all the experiences that you have had in your life and create what you truly desire. You could even watch movies too. Sure, be inspired by movies as well because you know what? Movies are actually inspired by reality, right? Somebody actually thought up the storyline of the movie inside of their head. And I'm like, oh, let's turn it into a movie. But I have so many stories of clients who have movie-worthy stories. They have even stories I couldn't even, any writer couldn't even come up with, right? So, and the reason why it's so important for you to come up with those real desires is that for one, it invites you to really focus on yourself. When you focus on yourself, you become a magnet, right? Because then whatever you do with yourself, that's what a man will do for you, right? So if you focus on yourself, a man will focus on you. If you invest into yourself, a man will invest into you. So you see the man's behavior is a direct mirror of the relationship that you have with yourself. Also, the reason why it's so important to really know what you desire is because you want to break through all those limiting stories that you have inside of yourself of not feeling good enough, not being worthy, uh, being on the wrong side of God's favor, whatever the case may be, whatever your parents have attempted to infiltrate your mind with. Like just know that you can totally break through that when you truly know what you desire. Now, we really just talked about how to discover your real desires as well. So again, make a vision of men that you have experienced in your life. And also, like, again, like make a list or like a vision of couples that you really love hanging out with. And you love just the the authentic smile or the family life that they have and so on. Now, here is a quick video of my client, Kim and how her discovering her real desires got her man to propose to her on bended knee. And she has a really cool story. So check this out. I was attracting a lot of men, but I wasn't attracting the right kind of man for me. They were either not ready for commitment. I had trouble figuring out who they were. It was, it was very 
confusing actually. So now, yeah, I'm engaged. Beautiful ring. I actually went to her to, um, to pick it out and yeah, he just wants to make me happy and we were very conscious about um, each other and our vulnerabilities and he comes over and he just hugs and says, I love you. I just want to let you know everything's going to be okay. It's a really fun. It just keeps getting better. And he's taking, in three days, he's taking me on like this dream trip. We're going to the South of France together his gift to me and um i'm really excited to share it with him now here's key number two you gotta know what's really blocking you from love and so what i mean by that is identify what are your real love blocks and so what i don't mean is what are your surface love blocks right so for example you could say you know what there is no good men in my town as a matter of fact there's only ten thousand people of us living here right or you could say, um, you know, I'm not, I'm too busy, right? Like I, you know, I can't, I can't get out. I don't meet anyone in my industry. There's only men, right? I, I'm never, uh, sorry, in my industry, are only women. I never come across men. Um, so there's many different reasons, right? Like I just have to find the right dating website, right? Like I just have to be more patient. I just have to be more compassionate. Um, I have to be. Right. So it's just like, I have to be this and that first in order to attract the love. Right. So there's like the surface problem, which is not the real problem. What we actually want to look at is what is the root problem, right? What's the root problem? And the root problem is like, maybe you got feel, felt shameful, right? Embarrassed, ridiculed by your parents because they were emotionally unavailable. Or maybe they betrayed your trust so much because they are actually narcissists. Maybe they were even abusive. And you told yourself, you know, I'm going to make sure I keep men at an arm's length. That way I keep myself safe, right? So those are the real love blocks, Right. Also, like, you know, I'm going to be Miss Independent because that way I can't I know I can't really rely on a man. I saw I couldn't really rely on my dad. Um, so forget about it. You know what I mean? I'm going to I'm going to take this into my own hands. Right. I was never really desired and wanted. So I'm going to brace myself for for that to happen with the man as well. Right. So it's really important to uncover what's really blocking you. Um, in love. And how you do that is I want you to just think about all the things, the patterns that you're experiencing right now with men, right? So you may be experiencing, you know, men are ghosting me. Men are making me all those promises and then they'll drop me like a hot potato, right? Um, men are sending me mixed signals, right? They say like they're interested, but then they call me um, every two months. Um, you know, men are just not making me a priority, right? They say they're interested, but somehow everything else is more important. You know, the ex is more important because it's the mother of the kids or the kids are more important or the work is more important or just even like just playing bingo is more important. I just, literally, I've heard this. I heard, I've heard it all, right? So everything is more important. Is that the pattern that you're experiencing, right? Or are you experiencing a pattern where First, the man is like looking all wonderful. He's love bombing you. But then he turns into a monster, right? Like he's literally taking off the mask and you can't even believe how he's treating you and how he's gaslighting to you and how he's abusing you. What is your particular pattern in your love life? Now, here's a quick video of my client, Avni, and how discovering what was really blocking her got her the loving marriage she won it. And also, by the way, um, happy baby boy as well. I have been involved in growth and development for almost 10 years now. But when I met you, I, was, I had transformed over time, right? My career and money and all of that. This one thing was just not happening, right? And like right before I worked with you, I'd worked with, a, with another coach, a couple coach, and it still didn't work out. And I'm like, where is that man? And then I was in relationships where either I wasn't interested in them and they were like all about me. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And, and then the flip of it, was like I was too attached. I was mm -hmm. too into the man. I was like running behind a man when in the back of my head, I was like, 
I can tell there's something off about this, but how else am I supposed to get this man? This is not even the person that I would really want to be with, but I don't think I can be with anybody. I was drained. I was also like getting to the point where I was just cynical and resigned that this was ever going to happen. Where are you at right now with that? So we're getting married at the end of this year. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually coming along really well. Like we just were getting RSVPs and it's like, oh my God, this is becoming real. And people are like, I can't believe you're getting married. And I'm like, yeah, I can't either. Key number three. This is my favorite, the power of self-trust. So you may be like, Anki, what does that have to do with anything? Well, remember when I was sharing earlier, right? When we make decisions, like we have to be able to trust ourselves because how else are you getting out of the wheel of second guessing yourself, questioning yourself, doubting yourself, sabotaging yourself when you don't trust yourself? right? Also, you're open to be manipulated and to be influenced by people who not necessarily have the best in mind for you, right? Who will actually distract you off track, right? So, you know, there's a saying, misery loves company. So if your girlfriends can't find the right man for them, then guess what? They will try to like infiltrate your mind with beliefs, like why it's also not possible for you. Because I don't know if you've heard about it, there's the crap in the bucket syndrome. Craps will pull each other back into the bucket because nobody's going to leave the bucket, right? We're all staying together. And so what's really important to fully trust yourself is being able to know what your intuition sounds and looks like, right? Is it an internal dialogue? Is it whispering something specific in your ear, right? Like not here, do this instead. Is it more of a visual? Is it more of a gut feeling, right? Is it, do you feel something in your heart? Do you feel something in your throat? Like there, there is a certain way how your body communicates intuition to you that helps you to trust yourself, right? So when you trust yourself, you make the right decisions. Life just works. You're happy with the outcome, right? Like you actually, you're proud of yourself. You feel confident. You feel you have the resources inside of yourself. You feel you can rely on yourself and you feel like you can open your heart, right? Because you can risk having your heart open because you know that your intuition would guide you to set boundaries accordingly if, it's, if it was suited to the situation right? You would also not necessarily have all your walls up because you would trust, right? So you, you trust the man. And then of course, if you trust yourself, you attract men into your life who are trustworthy. I know this might be a light bulb for you right now, right? So I said it again, right? Like you attract, attract men into your life who are trustworthy when you trust yourself, right? And so like, again, why self-trust is so important is because that's the only North Star that you truly have. You see, everyone else has a different agenda. Like, they just do. Everybody has different goals in life, right? And they want to enroll you into their goals. And they don't mind distracting you off the path a little bit, right? Also, especially with men. But when you trust yourself, you know exactly when to set boundaries, right? You don't feel guilty afterwards, right? You step into your power unapologetically. And of course, because of that, you attract the man into your life who's just as self-respecting, accomplished, and self-trusting, just like you. Now, here's a quick exercise to do together right now, how to increase your self-trust. So what I want you to do is think about a time in your life where you trusted yourself and it was the right decision, right? So maybe you trusted yourself to not move or maybe you trusted yourself to buy this house or maybe you trusted yourself to go on a second date with this guy or maybe you trusted yourself to go on this online dating site or maybe you trusted yourself fill in the blank. But whatever it is, 
or think about like an academics way, maybe what college to go to, whatever it is, right? What degree to, for, to go for, whatever it is. Think about you making that decision, trusting yourself, and then it turned out to be the right decision. It was the best decision you could have ever made. Like, how did that make you feel? Like confident, right? Like happy. Like I can rely on myself, right? Respecting yourself, maybe on top of the world, right? But you can rely on yourself, right? Like you can increase your self-trust. And I also want you to, to think about where you felt that in your body the strongest. So allow yourself to get a little map of what that self-trust really feels like for you. Now, here again, to show us a little bit more, here's a quick video of my client, Megan, and how developing her own self-trust got her loving and committed relationship with her man. So check it out. Before I came to you, one of my biggest blocks was being vulnerable and open with men. And also taking a look like inside myself when I noticed, you know, I noticed that there were things that I was attracting again and again. I was noticing these negative dating patterns or like the only men I were attracted to were unavailable, didn't want a relationship. And, you know, my friends and family would say, it's not you, it's, it's them. You just haven't met the right guy yet. And like that never resonated with me fully. I always kind of had this like feeling inside, like Ugh, there's something I'm like holding back with men. I'd meet these men or I'd have like a nice relationship, but it just wasn't getting deeper or it wasn't going anywhere at all. So I met a man um, back in like the beginning of June. So when I was like reaching the end of my program and he has been so amazing, like he has seen my vulnerable side. I've been able to open up and like reach new emotional levels and tell him things about myself and my past that I did not previously feel comfortable for and the fact that he still like supports me and is like you know I want to see all those parts of you like I and like this anxiety that you experience like I want to be able to talk about it with you and he's he's had that too and like you know just being able to feel like really super seen and heard by a man is like how I felt with him I feel so valued I feel so seen like I feel like Yes, there's a man that I'm attracted to on all levels, like physically, emotionally, intellectually, like that he gets me. We can talk for hours and it's fun. Like we can have fun and laugh together. Like I feel so happy. Number four is embracing uncertainty with an open heart. Da -da -da -da. So this is really interesting because on my journey of having a more anxious attachment style, like I was, you know, I was not really embracing uncertainty with an open heart. For, for one, I was even not even embracing uncertainty. Like I was avoiding uncertainty as much as I possibly can. So what that looks like in your dating life is when you try to avoid uncertainty, it's like you're not taking any risks. You're not opening your heart. You're not sending the text message or you're sending so many text messages because you want to have certainty again. You can't be the unknown. You can't flirt, right? You're not even smiling at a man because you don't want to feel uncertain about whether he's going to smile back, whether he likes you, whether he is interested in you, whether he's attracted to you, right? You can't be with the feeling of like him, like not, you know, not knowing what he's thinking, basically, right? So there's this tension that happens inside of yourself and you can't be with that. So that was true for me. Right. I was, I didn't want to be with uncertainty. So, guess what? I never was in a long term relationship because I was never open enough for it. Right. I was never vulnerable enough for it. Everything stayed on the surface. And of course, I attracted men into my life who were equally afraid of opening up their heart and express their emotions. Right. But what I mean with embracing uncertainty with an open heart is visualize this. You're sending, let's say, a text message to a man and you're sharing something, you know, that's somewhat important to you. So it's kind of important to you that you kind of get a response back from him, right? But you don't know how he's going to take it. So you're in the uncertainty. So you have two choices now. You can either have an open heart and totally trust that whatever is meant to happen will happen. You love yourself for being congruent for what you thought, right? what you say and what you did, which means sent a text message, is in alignment, 
and you're proud of yourself because you're in integrity. Or you can brace yourself. And how that looks like is you can actually start telling yourself, well, you know, I better, you know, like who knows, maybe he's not going to get back to me. But if he's not getting back to me, that's fine. I'm just going to reach out to, um, you know, to, um, to Bradley instead, right? Um, you know, so you're already thinking about exit strategies in case he doesn't get back to you. That's what it means to brace yourself in a certain sea. So that's not really helpful, right? Because that means you're throwing a coin in the air and you don't even know where the coin is going to land, which side of the coin is going to face up. But you're already saying, you know, I'm already getting prepared that it's going to be the wrong side of the coin. What do you mean by that? Like the coin is in midair? Anything is possible. Infinite possibility. It's the most potent and rich space to be in in that moment, but you're already preparing yourself for disappointment. And because of that, you unconsciously start to send mixed signals that you should get disappointed, right? You're handing a man a resume. Like, again, why this is so important is because if you don't embrace uncertainty with an open heart, you attract men into your life who are equally afraid of their emotions, right? They also don't want to be in uncertainty with an open heart. They also make up the story. Oh, once we get married, then you take advantage of me. Or then you're going to take all my money. Or then you're going to rip out my heart. Or, you know, once I share my emotions with you, then you're going to run for the hills. Or once I share my weakness with you, right? So all those things. So they hold back. And that's the more um, avoidant attachment style. So what do you want to do instead in order to embrace uncertainty with an open heart is you want to actually practice whatever you're afraid of in that moment, right? So are you afraid to smile at someone openly because you don't know what he feels, right? So smile and then just wait, right? Like, and I know it's easier said than done. So obviously you need support with that, right? Or, you know, like you're sharing something vulnerable and then wait. But what do you do while you wait, right? That's where you need to support. That's where you need, of course, the strategy. Before we go into that, here's a quick video of my client, Heather, and how embracing uncertainty with an open heart, and that's quite the story here, helped her attract her life partner. So check this out. I was divorced about two years ago, um, re-entered this dating world after 15 years of not dating or not entertaining any options. And I did some research. I found you online and decided to be more strategic uh, in how I approach dating. I could honestly say that I am in a much happier place in a stable relationship. I met a wonderful man who was a lot of things that I was looking for, very different from my ex-husband. So I'm, I'm really happy. He's a quality man. He, um, he has great character. He wants to make me happy. He wants to come through for me. He wants to be my rock and got, and got my back, which is a very different feeling uh, from how I feel in my previous marriage. And finding number five is getting the right strategy and support. Now, let me tell you a little bit what the right strategy and support looks like, right? So for one, you want to have the triangle of transformation, which means you want to have the right mentorship. The right mentorship, meaning your mentor having been where you are, where you have been, right? Having had the emotionally unavailable parent, right? Or maybe had um, the abusive parent, had the narcissistic parent, right? Had the limiting beliefs about herself, but also was able to attract the relationship that you desire to have into her life, right? She has the lifestyle that you truly desire to have, right? She travels the world. She has a credible husband by her side. She has the family life that you desire. That's number one. Number two is you want to have the right step-by-step -step system. You see, what so many women do 
is they just kind of create this monster, right? Like, um, and what I mean by that is like they go on YouTube and then I'm going to grab this video and the five things to say to him. And then I'm going to go to this person and I'm going to pick and choose. And, and you create this monster and it makes no sense. And it's not congruent and it's totally confusing. And it's sending all the mixed messages and you don't even, now you're more confused than ever. And it certainly doesn't make you feel safe. So the name of the game in order to attract the right man for you and to change your pattern is you also have to have a system that makes you feel safe and has you step outside of your comfort zone at the same time, right? So you need to have both in place to avoid self-sabotage. And then lastly, you need to have a cohort of like-minded women who have had similar struggles like you because it helps you to keep your heart open know that you're not the only one and also discover any additional blind spots that you may have not thought about. And ultimately, you will be able to hold each other accountable. Now, this is what we talk about, like why is it so important to get the right strategy and support is because if you listen to your well-meaning girlfriends, again, you don't always know what agendas they have. If you listen to your mom and there's this family curse, right? Like settling for the wrong guy, or you just kind of have to suck it up, or this is the best you can do, or, you know, you shouldn't ask for too much, or who do you think you are? All those things. We have all those programs inside of ourselves. So when you don't have the right strategy by your side and you're listening to the wrong people, then you live their life. And what that translates into is you're simply not being happy, you feeling empty, potentially even depressed, right? And lonely because you're like, how did I get here? This is not even what I want. Even on the outside, it all looks glorious to everyone else, right? That's how many women end up in narcissistic relationships, right? Also, what happens is particular with girlfriends is actually you communicate, you know, like into each other's, how you expect each other to be. And you spend too much time together. You do this unconsciously. So your girlfriends are way too close to you. Your family is too close to you. Everyone is too close to you to give you objective feedback. They also don't have all the distinctions. They haven't worked with thousands of women all over the world and have identified the true patterns that are getting in the way of you attracting the right man. Now you have two choices. So you can either do this alone. You can continue to be misindependent. You can use the same strategies that have gotten you where you are today. Or you can let us help you get the relationship you desire. Right. And it's interesting when we say you can do this alone, because think about where you were 10 years ago. Think about the goals you had 10 years ago. Why would you have ever thought that you would be in the place that you are now? So maybe you visualize 10 years ago, in 10 years, I will definitely be in a relationship. I will definitely be married. I'll definitely have at least two kids, whatever the case may be. I'll be, I'll, I'll have all the stuff. But now we're 10 years later and what has happened, right? So sometimes we can have this illusion, like we can do this alone, but can we really, right? And this was like my biggest breakthrough was like breaking through my fears of, relying on someone again, asking for support. Or the second choice you have, let us help you get the relationship you desire. Now, in order to do that, the first step is to take our free Get the Relationship You Desire Love Quiz below. And here's what this quiz will help you with. You get much more clarity on your personal love experience, right? Your unique love experience. Everyone has like a different story, right? What the real opportunities and blocks to love could currently be for you because people have different upbringings, they have different belief systems and so on. You also get customized resources and recommendations to help you to create the loving long-term and committed relationship you desire based on your unique answers. So now click the link below to get your free instant access to that. So one bonus tip I'll give you, right? So what oftentimes happens is you ask yourself, well, 
Um, is this working period? Well, it surely is because you've heard all those other incredible women share their stories. And I have like, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of so more stories, right? Um, also, can it work for me? Now, this is really interesting because whatever you focus on expands. So if you believe that it can work for you, if you say, how can it work for me? How can I be even more aware how it can work for me? You will find more reasons how it can work for you. If you, however, say, you know, this is not going to work for me. You know what I mean? I already know it's going to work for me. Um, everything always works for everyone else. By the way, that was me too, right? I was always everyone else get married, move in with their partner, have their babies, all the things, right? Um, so there's like, you know, it's not going to work for me. Whether you think it's right for you, whether whether you think you can do it or you can't do it, either way, you're right. Right, so you have to decide, like, are you willing to take a step in the right direction, right? And overcome your fears. Because the most successful women in our program, they were looking at why this is the best decision that they have ever made. And also they knew that doubt is coming up. Every time when an opportunity presents itself, doubt is coming up. How do you know that? Well, you wouldn't be here if there was no doubt coming up when an opportunity presented itself. Does that make sense? Because you would allow unconscious demand to approach you. You would unconsciously start using the right language with the man. You would send the right signals. You would be inviting and welcoming and attractive. And I don't mean like, like outside attractive. I mean like actually internally attractive to a man, right? So just know that doubt is totally normal. It always will come in the way. But what you want to do instead is you want to know that there's a higher part inside of you that is that that is here for a reason, that watched this all the way till the end, that is full of desire and vision for your life to have the right relationship in your life. What I invite you to do, allow that part, whether it's like the queen or someone powerful, right? Like pick up that little girl that's full of fear or that's full of doubt, right? And just give her a new perspective and take action anyways. So click the link below now to get your free instant access to that.